I'm talking about the matron that he called ugly yeah. and greasy yeah. and didn't make the boys horny. I'm talking about the newspaper executive who he's absolutely viciously misogynist about. I'm talking about Camilla, who he calls a dangerous villain. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. The yeah. book is laced with misogyny. Why would two people who hate the, everything the royals seem to stand for, hate the monarchy, are intent on destroying it, have done nothing but trash it and diminish it in the last two years? Why on earth would they want to be at a coronation of the next monarch of this country? Piers, I thought you'd read the full 400 plus pages of spare. Then you will have got the message loud and clear. There is no macro Harry plan. He is a dyed-in-the-wool royalist. No, he's not. He doesn't... Yes, no, I'm no. afraid. He's no. going about it all the wrong way. He's done unspeakable damage, but he wants to save the monarchy, no, apparently. No, oh, no, no. No, I'm being serious. No, and what I think, he wants... Well, I think no, what he wants, no. Tessa, okay. Tessa, let me just respond to that. What he wants is to keep the titles, the royal titles for him and his wife, yeah. because it's the titles that make the money, and they're making hundreds of millions of dollars. His book, number one global bestseller, his documentary series, huge success, blah, blah, blah. Of course it is. He's trashing the royal family from the inside. This is a boy in pain who grew oh, up... Please. I'm so sorry. Please. I'm so sorry. Who grew up in a goldfish bowl. Is he in pain or has he but, never been happy? Which one he, is it? He, He's telling he, us how happy he is. Who grew up in a goldfish bowl, who's thrashing his way out of the gilded cage, but actually has realised he doesn't know how to exist without the gilded cage. Oh, no, he does. I, incidentally, am no apologist... For Harry, you are but okay. I do apologise on your behalf because one minute you sit there, Piers, and you say, "Oh, they'll keep yapping away; they should be ignored." There is no way, if they so much as fart, that you would ignore what they say. You stoke the let boiler, me, you me, stoke oh, the problems be clear. the royal family. Let me be clear. People say this to me: "Go, why do you keep banging yeah. on about these why two? Why do you? Because they keep Bang trashing on. the royals." In podcasts, in books, in documentary series, in interviews, it never stops. And I say to them now, I will stop writing and commenting about them if they just shut up. But Go to Camp Montecito, be the happy people you keep telling us they, that you are, stop trashing the royal family, stop attacking our monarchy, stop diminishing this country. If you do that, I'll leave you, you alone. You just heard from the, dignified, want to be left alone. the dignified Jenny Bond... Reduce it to a footnote, Piers, but you couldn't resist doing that because, like them, you make well, money from I love this. Jenny. Let's own well, it. Nobody, you look, make money I from I bow this. to nobody. Of course I do. Everybody who's involved in covering the rules makes money. I rest makes, my case. Makes money. Well, you're making money appearing on this show Thank tonight. You. Double time. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. So you're making money too out of it. So let's not be hypocrites. Jenny Bond, look, no, I bow to nobody in my admiration of Jenny Bond, but she would have been the first in her previous capacity as the BBC's royal doyen to probably not actually reduce them to a footnote at the coronation because she'd know it's a big, hot story. And this is the problem, Anne Whittakam, isn't it? What? Is that, uh, is that, unfortunately, everywhere they go, so does the lens of attention because they make it their job well, to make sure that we don't leave them alone. That is exactly why I think they should not be at the coronation, for this reason. I ask myself a very straightforward question. Which will be the bigger circus, if they don't come or if they do come? And if they come, they're likely to be booed. We all know that. Mm. There'll be a lot of attention on them because they're there. Well, whereas... that'll be the story. They get booed at the coronation. Exactly. Whereas if they're in Montecito... Totally agree. ..we're all free to concentrate on the coronation. So I feel very strongly they shouldn't come. I also... <laughs> hang on, you had a long go. I also feel equally strongly that the royals should not be proposing a negotiation meeting. Because we've heard Harry's terms. He wants an abject surrender. No, I wouldn't he trust him as far as I could throw him. No, exactly. That's the point. I and mean, Roy, the... Roya, um, this is the problem I would have if I were Charles and William in particular, um, is how do you trust them? How do you trust them, given that almost all their private conversations with Harry have now appeared in this book, including really intimate stuff, including at Prince Philip's uh, funeral and so on? How on earth can they trust him to have some sort of private meeting which stays private? Uh, well, that's a, a great question, and that's something that's even been acknowledged by sources close to Harry and Meghan, who've said to me, and I've written that, that um, even they acknowledge that there's an issue there that perhaps the royal family might not uh, trust that private stays private. But what I would say is, as much as it might stick in the craw of many, many members of the royal family, particularly the ones you've just mentioned, who come under heavy fire in the book, I think if the king isn't seen to somehow do something, I think he's going to come under even more heavy fire from um, his son and other people down the line. 
But, uh, but that will be the great test. I think if they, if they do propose some sort of, and I'm not saying a negotiation, but some sort of sit down, and then something leaks out and it comes from Harry and Meghan's side, then I think it probably is game over. But at least the king may have tried. Yeah, I mean, look, Jenny Bond, it is a, it, I feel incredibly sorry for, for Charles. He's lost both his parents in the space of two years. He's probably still mourning his mother, who just died a few months ago. He's taken on the monarchy. You know, he's our new monarch. He's about to be crowned the king of this great country. I mean, all these huge pressures, both personally and professionally. And then he's got his, his young son causing just total, endless, relentless mayhem. I mean, my, if that was one of my sons, I've said to them, I've got three boys in my 20s. One of you does this to me and goes rogue like this. That's it. Bang. There won't be any reconciliation parties. You're done. Well, you see, I don't think he wants to lose his son as well as having lost his parents. And I do think that uh, Charles is quite a compassionate guy. And I think he would probably agree with me that what we're witnessing here is almost the unravelling of a youngish man who um, is so mentally fragile now and so confused. There are so many errors in the book. Um, and conflicted within himself and really suffering. And I, you say, I, hang on, you hang know, on, I, Jenny, I agree Jenny, he's gone Jenny, a bit loopy. He I said keep... some terrible things. No, right, but Jenny, I think we means, should I'm sorry show to interrupt some you, but I want to pick you compassion. up on that thing about the mental health thing. I don't see somebody suffering or in pain. I see a smug little narcissist yeah, making yeah. a ton of cash, yeah, yeah. abusing and revealing secrets yeah, about his family. Yeah. I don't see anyone fragile whatsoever. He's, you know, he keep, on the one hand, he says, I'm the happiest I've ever been. On the other hand, he wants us to believe he's a pain-struck young guy. He's not. He's nearly 40. He, you know, he's had a long time to get over the pain that, by the way, millions of people have to go through, losing parents when they're young. It's not, it's not exclusive to him. His own brother went through exactly the same thing and doesn't seem to feel the need to trash his family in public. So I just don't really buy in, Jenny, to this... You know, he's racked with pain and is so fragile. I think he doesn't give a damn about the damage to the mental health of all his relatives. And yet he's supposed to be the prince of mental health. What have you I said are, that's wrong? You are renowned for lacking empathy. I won't use... What? I've got plenty of empathy. What? No, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry, he's renowned for it. No, no, actually, know, I'm not yes, renowned uh, for it. No, I'm not renowned are. for it. No, no, How I, actually, for I it? actually have a lot of empathy for the right people. Actually, and my entire career, so I've actually shown empathy. No, no, I show empathy for the people who deserve it. Harry is not deserving of my empathy. In your opinion, he has but zero it... empathy for anybody else that he's trashing. As somebody who has watched Harry from birth through the death yeah. of his mother, throughout, you don't have a shred of empathy for his peculiar lifestyle that's trained him for nothing. No, that's left him with none. double loads of expectations and shed no, loads of pain. None, Did none you not go to prep school? No, I think he's... Imagine going to prep school in your mum's steamrolled oh. bed. Actually, I went to prep Come school on, when I was 13, actually. Yeah. Then I went to so a state now, school. Now imagine you're then I went to a state school. And actually, what he should have done is go to a state school. And you're, oh, for goodness. you're grimacing. Yeah, I'm absolutely... Just, just calm down the pair of you. Uh, I'm, I'm the, perfectly calm. Neither of you sounded at the moment. Now... Can I just oh, point this out? Pretty rich coming from you. You're normally the one blowing up, but go on. <laughs> I've actually sat here trying to get a word in edgeways for a long time, as you know. Come on. Uh, but, uh, I mean, let me make this point. The coronation is not just a personal occasion. Now, you can understand a father wants to involve his son in all sorts of, of things, and it's, but it's not a royal wedding. It's a coronation. It's an occasion of state. And you've got to ask yourselves, mm. what is the most dignified way that we can have this because it is an occasion of state. I mentioned earlier about Jeremy Clarkson, who... I, listen, I get on fine with Clarkson now, but just to remind viewers, he did punch me in the head and I've got a scar here which comes up when I have a tan like I do now from his right fist. So it's not like we've been the easiest of bed... There we are. Easiest of bedfellows over the years. I've literally borne the scars of Clarkson. So I'm not going to be his greatest cheerleader in a moment of misfortune. All I would say is this is that he could not have issued a more sincere apology than he did today. And as I've always suspected about the Woke Brigade, the moment you do that, they don't accept it. And by the way, Harry's the king of the Wokies. They just chuck it straight back in your face. And I... I mean, Tessa, we didn't discuss this, but here's my problem with it. If it, can't he apologise enough? I mean, is, is there no apology uh, oh, that's did, acceptable? Did you not rummage around in the small print? It's because the Grand Tour's apparently been pulled by Amazon Prime. That apology... Well, we don't the... know that. It's not be well, confirmed oh, but yet. come on. Not be confirmed yet. Smell the coffee. I'd things. rather wait and Why have it confirmed. Why do you think Clarkson apologised? Why, deep you down in your tippy-top... Well, do you think he should be cancelled for everything? 
Uh, to be honest, I think we've had quite a lot of Clarkson over the years and time to bring on a fresh lot. Yeah, I would have but no you problem. you think he should but be cancelled for that I mean, reason? He's not been cancelled. He's still plat platformed everything. Yeah, I'm you were just boasting about him being cancelled. Be. But do no, you think, think he should, should be, be cancelled? I think maybe if the Amazon Prime think it's time for them to shuffle off, then perhaps it's... Well, we don't... They like I say, they, they have haven't confirmed that. I mean, you won't answer the question. Do you think he should be Well, that's a good question. I think there should be a punishment for that level of vitriol. I would like to see... And don't shoot me there. I would like to see some modification to the to the to include misogyny in those hate really? We're talking oh. on a day. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, we are. Minute. We're okay. talking on a day Tessa, when the term institutional misogyny is being touted around in the police. So what about all the hideously misogynistic things that Harry says in his book? Oh, not back to that. Not back to the prep school teacher whom he made laugh. Yeah. When he was no, no. eleven years old. No, no. The would one you have preferred Sorry, that Harry White was Tessa, you've got to let me finish. I'm talking about the matron that he called ugly yeah, and greasy yeah. and didn't make the boys horny. I'm talking about the newspaper executive who he's absolutely viciously misogynist about. I'm talking about Camilla, who he calls a dangerous villain. Blah, 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 no, blah, blah. The no. book is laced with misogyny. No, so I agree with you. Can't be one rule Misogyny for one, should one be taken another. more seriously. What about he starts with himself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, would you have preferred that he pretended he was a saint at prep school and never did that cruel that my Lord of the Flies start to make his children do? My that wasn't you have preferred... the question. No, what Tessa, about the I didn't... Tessa, Tessa you know my, question, my question to you was very simple. Why should he be allowed to be a misogynist? I didn't... But anyone who dares to be a misogynist about his wife, he wants to get cancelled. I just don't think you can compare oh. the right. idea of someone... Of course you can. ..being, being cellularly liked on a cellular level, paraded down the street naked, having human excrement thrown at her, yeah. with describing a tabloid actually, editor as something... I don't actually, know what, what, he's, what he said about a female editor was actually pretty but well was up it there. was it sexist? It was just unpleasant. Even, oh, actually, it was misogynist, sexist and revolting, yeah. Which I got very exercised about the fact that Meghan and Harry, for two years, led the world to believe that the palace had been racist about the skin colour of their baby, and then they decided to turn around and say, actually, we never meant that at all, which I thought was deplorable. You defended it, and that was Iman's verdict on your defence. I was basically getting gaslit. What's your response? Um, not so much the gaslit bit, but um, I guess Iman and I would have to um, agree to disagree. I wouldn't call anybody ignorant just because they don't agree with my point of view. Um, and I don't think it's helpful, especially when we're discussing something like racism. Um, and, and, you know, one black person calling another person black uh, ignorant because they don't agree. That, so that, that, I find, that I find sad. I, I'm saddened by that. And, and, you know, so I'm not going to pick a fight with Imam about that because I've seen that happen uh, on... You know, I've worked in the media for 35 years. I know how that game's played. Um, so, so that would be my only comment. She's entitled to her view. Um, you're entitled to your view. I'm entitled to my view. But I think it's... I actually think it's quite disgraceful to label someone ignorant purely because they don't agree with you. So we it's, it's, it's not acceptable you. to call someone ignorant, but you can call them disgraceful, Imam. <laughs> Well, uh, no, no, I, I said doing it is disgraceful. Well, it's the Sorry, same thing, don't, isn't don't it? My... It's the same thing. You just called it no, disgraceful. No, I'm so, saying... Iman, you're no, disgraceful doing for it... calling <laughs> Trisha <Sorry>. ignorant. <laughs> I think I... it's... Well, Trisha, we just heard you. You just said she was disgraceful. Exactly. So let her answer the I charge of being a disgrace. I didn't say she was disgraceful. OK, Iman, you're a disgrace for calling Trisha ignorant. I think I'm awesome, personally, so I just want to throw that out there. Secondly, I never called you uh, ignorant because you didn't agree with my opinion. I called you ignorant because you have a lack of knowledge. There's a clear difference, and it was never about a view. It's about just understanding facts. And when we talk about unconscious bias, that's based on feeling. That is a fact, Trisha. So it's not about me and you disagreeing as two black women. I'm going to call you ignorant in spite of your colour if you have a lack of knowledge. Simple as that. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, Tricia, come on, you've got to answer the charge. It was basically your ignorance as, in, listen, as if, in lack of knowledge if, of the subject you were talking about. If somebody decides that I'm ignorant, I'm not going to sit here and try to, to dissuade them otherwise. They've quite clearly made up their minds. If Imam wants to call me ignorant and thinks of me ignorant, what have you... Yeah, let, uh, fine, go ahead. Trisha, I you mean, did a lot of damage that day. You did a lot of damage and I had to come along and fix it. Just like Harry did a lot of damage. Oh, and other people oh, had to come I'm along and fix it. Me, Shola, you. Kiande, we had to come along and fix your dirty wax. You know what? I don't have time for people like you when you come on national TV spewing garbage. And you're right. I'll actually add to your second point. I don't want to argue because I'm a bit more... In fact, I don't believe black women should come onto TV arguing, so I'll just leave it at that. I called you ignorant because of your lack of knowledge. 
it Thank kind you. of ends there, basically. Prince Harry. What is your view of these two, Harry and Meghan? Because apparently their approval rating's plummeting now in America, according to a Newsweek poll out today. Well, you know, I always uh, use my 17-year-old daughter as a good barometer for what she thinks of, you know, the celebrity set. And I asked her, I said, Maria, you know, what do you think? You've been reading all this stuff about Harry and Meghan. And she, my daughter said, well, Meghan's really pretty. You know, I like her clothes. But he seems like a real wuss. <laughs> like, that's, like, that's a 17-year-old's opinion of what is going on here. And I think that kind of sums it up for a lot of people. I mean, it seems that uh, the queen, when she passed on, it brought back, I think, everything that you know, we love about tradition mm. and respect and duty, service to country, service to nation. And she really epitomized that. And that was such a wonderful tribute and send off to her, uh, almost an era gone by. And he is kind of representing almost 180 degree opposite, at least in this period. I'm not yeah. talking about when he was in the military or any of that. But in this period, a lack of gratitude, a lack of uh, concern for uh, his family. I, I, I like the people who kind of keep it inside the family. You yeah, want to complain, agree. complain to your family. Totally yeah, agree. Complain within the walls of the family. Otherwise, lose the title and go oh, on I your I completely merry way. agree. If you don't like it, give up the titles and just be the new Kardashians. It's fine. Harry, let us remind ourselves, it's just literally just published a best-selling 416-page book which is effectively a series of articles shared in hate. And when it comes to misogyny, he, like his wife, identifies arch-feminists. And yet here he is, and we've gone to the audiobook to put it in his own words, describing the disabled matron that he mocked at school. Unlike the other matrons, Pat wasn't hot. Pat was cold. Pat was small. Walking was hard. Stairs were torture. She'd descend backwards, glacially. Often we stand on the landing below her doing antic dances, making faces. Do I need to say which boy did this with the most enthusiasm? We went on mocking her as she came down the stairs. The reward was worth the risk. For me, the reward wasn't tormenting poor Pat, but making my mates laugh. Where's Pat's apology? And what about the first woman he slept with? I suspected he was referring to my recent loss of virginity. Inglorious episode with an older woman. She liked horses quite a lot and treated me not unlike a young stallion. Quick ride, after which she'd smacked my rump and sent me off to graze. Among the many things about it that were wrong, it happened in a grassy field behind a busy pub. Lovely way to talk about this older woman, a private citizen who's now the subject of global mockery. Who is that woman? Does he care about the way he talked about her? It's not exactly chivalrous, is it? to reveal stuff like that in a book that's been read by millions around the world. Where's her apology? And how about the female newspaper editor that Harry really didn't like? Who the hell is this editor? Loathsome toad, I gathered. Everyone who knew her was in full agreement that she was an infected pustule on the arse of humanity, plus a excuse for a journalist. An infected pustule on the arse of humanity. Where does that sit with being nice to women, being supportive of women, being a feminist. Where's the apology for that female newspaper editor? Is there going to be one for that blatant misogyny? And what about Camilla, the Queen Consort, his own stepmother? She was the villain. She was the third person in the marriage. She needed to rehabilitate her image. In a funny way, I even wanted Camilla to be happy. Maybe she'd be less dangerous if she was happy. His own stepmother, the love of his father's life, our queen to be, she'll be coronated too. A dangerous villain. Where's Camilla's apology for that hateful rhetoric? You see my point here? If anyone should be groveling for forgiveness and issuing apologies, isn't it Harry and Meghan for selling all the family secrets to the highest bidders? for allowing the royals to be smeared as racist and then saying, oh, we didn't mean to do that, two years later, for allowing Britain to be cast as a bigoted hellhole. But they won't ever apologise for any of it because they're hypocrites, they're professional victims who wallow for a living. And there's no point apologising to professional victims. I knew that when I was asked to apologise to Meghan Markle two years ago. Why would you?
What Charles will not want, really won't want, is estrangement from his son forever and any kind of major overshadowing of the coronation. And if there is nothing done, no contact at all between now and the coronation, I really do think we're going to keep hearing from Harry and Meghan in a very negative way, and, and Charles will want to avoid that. But you know what my response would be? It's like, all right, keep yapping if you want to. You've done your worst. Honestly, keep yapping and just completely ignore them. Don't invite them to any royal events. I mean, Jenny Bond, why the hell should they be invited to a coronation? It's the people's coronation. It's our coronation for our monarch. All they've done, these two, is damage the monarchy, damage the reputation of that institution, damage their family, the royal family, on which the monarchy's future depends. But what on earth have they done to deserve an invitation to a coronation? Where no, it's not just Charles, by the way, it's Camilla as well getting crowned, who, who Harry just trashed in his book. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, you know, this is the most important day probably in the whole of Charles's life. And if, as the loving father, which I believe him to be, he wants his younger son to be there, then I think that is his right and his privilege. And I think an, ex uh, an invitation will be extended to them. I, I think to not invite them really is going to be uh, feeding the hand that bites Charles. So it would be wise to invite them. And uh, if they do come... Uh, I think it, we, the media, actually, should take it upon ourselves not to make it not to make it overshadow the coronation. I mean, we don't want to have screaming headlines about them. So I think we should just have a footnote at the bottom of our coverage of the coronation and say also in, in, at, in attendance were the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I think that might be one approach. I'd like but, a footnote um, to that drag Harry... them out if that, yeah. in that eventuality. Let me bring in Tessa Dunlop. Um, <laughs> look, you are the great apologist for the Meghan and Harry. Here's my question for you.